Well, hello, this is uh, Chris. I'm back again. Uh, just to continue our discussion with uh, Coulomb's Law, or continue our discussion in electrostatics. Uh, so the uh, first discussion, we just kind of talked a little bit about uh, uh, the electrical uh, force, if you want to look at it that way, and uh, the, the interaction and uh, the concept of charge, something that's rather ill-defined uh, other than and the fact that it's, it's a... Uh, it's a, a physical property uh, that some types of matter have <coughs> and uh, different types of charge. If I have uh, two different types of charge, um, again, that, that positive uh, or the, the opposites attract is going to apply. I'm going to have an attractive force. And if I have the same, two types of the same charge, I'm going to have a repulsion occurring. And that's uh, pretty, pretty, pretty much uh, fundamentally ingrained in us, uh, you know, basically since since the time that we're uh, we're kiddos. So it's pretty easy to appreciate that that kind of concept of likes repel and opposites attract. All right, so let's go ahead and break the Coulomb's law down now. Uh, if you look here, I kind of have Coulomb's law up. And I do have a proper spelling. Um, I believe I spell it correctly on, on the first uh, discussion, but um, I'm pretty sure it's correct today or right now. Okay, so let's break this, this formula down and perhaps make it a little easier to, to work with and understand. Okay, so what this says is the force. And when we talk about force, um, this is going to be a, a quantity. This is a quantitative value that we're going to get. We'll actually be able to measure the force between two charged objects, if you want to look at it like that, because it can be particles or objects or whatever you want, uh, assuming or provided that there's some sort of charge involved. And we measure force in Newtons. Okay, so that's pretty easy to, to uh, kind of grasp that, okay, force of Newtons, this R squared over here is a pretty easy concept. This is the distance. squared. <clears throat> and we always have our distance in meters. Now clearly when we talk about uh, subatomic particles, uh, this is going to be a fractions of a meter. And uh, for most of our, even our day-to-day -day calculations of Coulomb's law, uh, we're actually going to have to use a scientific notation uh, because we're dealing with values that are that are incredibly small. So, just kind of throw that in the back of your mind that that we're, we'll be dealing with um, very large or very small numbers when we plug them into this formula. Uh, the Q1 and Q2. This is just the charge uh, of the first object, and multiply by the charge of the second object. Okay, that's pretty easy, and we'll talk a little bit about how we measure charge, because I haven't talked about that yet. And then this little guy over here, uh, 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. Well, we can simplify this a little bit and make it a little easier. We know that 4 pi isn't going to change. We know that pi is one of those constants of nature. Um, so we have a little constant here. Uh, the one's never going to change in this formula. Well, what about this epsilon naught here? What is epsilon naught? Well, epsilon naught, luckily enough for us, is just another one of those constants we find in, in nature. And this is something called the permittivity constant. And, and perhaps I'll talk about it uh, at another time, and talk about it a little more, more detail. Uh, but really what that is, is it just gives us a number. And it gives us a number of approximately 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12, and I believe that the units we're looking at uh, are coulomb squared uh, per newton per meter squared, I believe, are the units. Well, the neat thing is, all of these are constants, so what we can do is, we can take all this, and we can put it all together, this whole thing here, into one constant or one number because that number is never going to change. And so what we get is eight, approximately 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. And that becomes our constant, K. So we can rewrite this formula 
and we can actually just take this out and put k here because we now know that that's a constant. All right. So we've, we know that we measure distance in meters, that this is a constant, that our force uh, that, that's going to fall out of this formula will be in newtons. Let's talk about charge. And how do we measure charge? Okay, so charge. We measure charge in a unit known as a coulomb. And what is a coulomb? Well, if I take an electron, you know the electron has a negative charge and a proton has a positive charge. Now, the charge is the same, right? It's the same number, but one we put a negative and one we put a positive simply, uh, simply to differentiate the type of charge. So it's the same number that's just a negative and positive just kind of arbitrarily thrown in to make it a little easier for us. So what I, what I mean by that is if a charge on an electron is very, very tiny, so the charge of one, one electron is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So I need, so I need a whole bunch of electrons to make one coulomb. So again, I think this becomes pretty obvious why when we uh, calculate the Coulomb's law or the, the formula that we're going to be using um, scientific notation because we're dealing with very small numbers. So one Coulomb is going to equal approximately 6.24 times 10 to the 18 E's. And that could be electron, the charge of an electron, or the charge on a proton. Because remember that the number is the same, this 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, but for an electron it's negative, for a proton it's positive. Same number, where we just put a positive and negative again to differentiate the type of charge. So when we talk about one coulomb, that's a significant number of electrons for one coulomb. Um, so generally when we talk about particles, we're going to be dealing with very small numbers, but certainly we can have objects that aren't necessarily subatomic. We can have macroscopic objects that are going to have coulombs of charge on them. So just kind of uh, appreciate that as well. All right. so. Basically, if we go back to the Coulomb's law, F equals our constant charge on one particle, charge on the second, divided by the distance between them squared. So what this means is I have a particle here and a particle here. Maybe they're both positively charged, and I have X for my charge and Y for charge on that. It can be whatever number I want. And what I want, and then I have a distance between them D. So what I what I'm getting from this Coulomb's law is I can plug the x here, the y here, the d here. I can calculate it, and it's going to give me a force. In the case of this, since these are both positive, I'm going to have a repulsive, repulsive force. And I can actually calculate that force between these two objects or particles or what have you in newtons. And that is the basis of Coulomb's law. All right, guys, I hope, you, uh, I hope that helped a little bit. In the next couple of um, discussions, I'll talk about um, the, I'm going to actually compare Coulomb's Law to a couple of other um, equations in nature, and this R squared becomes you know, pretty significant. Um, and there's, there's actually a concept called the inverse square law that points to a deeper understanding or a deeper symmetry of all the laws of nature. And then in subsequent um, discussions, perhaps I'll even throw some numbers in here and we can calculate Coulomb's law.